2018 NFL Draft, final quick snap grades for all 32 teams I've heard the argument that grades on draft picks immediately after the draft are worthless. But I don't agree. These grades are not about what the player will look like three years from now, because no one knows. What the grades represent are an evaluation of the process each team went through to get the players they did, and whether their selection is of appropriate value as a prospect given their college game and athleticism. Taking this snapshot now also gives a baseline evaluation of teams' decision-making processes. If a prospect is considered a great pick the day of the draft, but doesn't work out, that's a completely different evaluation of his new team's decision than to bust who was considered a reach at the time. Waiting for three years to grade these picks leads to revisionist history, not an accurate evaluation. Note, selections and trades in the early rounds carry a heavier weight in the overall grade than those in the later rounds. AFC East Buffalo Bills draft picks, Wyoming QB Josh Allen, number 7 overall, Virginia Tech LB Tremaine Edmonds, number 16 overall, Stanford DT Harrison Phillips, number 96 overall, Weber State DB Taron Johnson, number 121 overall, Jacksonville State DB Saren Neal, number 154 overall, Virginia Tech Odd Wyatt Teller, number 166 overall, Clemson WR Ray Ray McLeod, number 187 overall, North Carolina WR Austin Prohl, number 255 overall. Day 1 grade, the end day 2 grade, the end day 3 grade, an overall grade, the end the skinny, tackle Cordy Glenn was shipped to Cincinnati in a swap of picks, setting Buffalo into a position to move up again to pick Allen. Giving up two second round picks without trading the number 22 pick this year or next year's first round pick is fine. Allen's inaccuracy as a thrower against marginal competition makes him a risk that many teams wouldn't want to take. He showed improvement through the draft process, though, so it's possible this will turn out. The Bills also moved down in last year's draft to get a second first rounder this year via Kansas City, and then moved back up when the exceptional Edmonds was available at 16. A good trade, especially since they only moved from the third to the fifth round in the deal. Trading to Land Allen made Friday night quiet for the Bills and we'll have to see if he was worth it. But picking up Phillips late in the third round was a great deal, as he could be a perfect replacement for nose tackle Kyle Williams whenever he retires. The guy I led Stanford in tackles last year as a nose tackle. Think about that. Duffalo was looking for interior O-line depth coming into the draft, and found a future starter in Teller, one of the strongest players in the draft. Their secondary needed bodies, as well, and two small school players, Johnson and Neal, will more than just fill roster spots. McLeod and Pro will provide very good depth as inside receivers. Miami Dolphins draft picks, Alabama DB Minka Fitzpatrick, number 11 overall, Penn State TE Mike Kosicki, number 42 overall, Ohio State LB Jerome Baker, number 73 overall, Notre Dame TE Durham Smythe, number 123 overall, Arizona State RB Callan Balage, number 131 overall, Southern Mississippi S. Cornell Armstrong, number 209 overall, Ohio LB Quentin Pulling, number 227 overall, New Mexico K. Jason Sanders, number 229 overall. Day 1 grade, the end day 2 grade, a day 3 grade, the overall grade, the end the skinny, the Dolphins didn't go get a top-notch quarterback, instead waiting to see if Ryan Tannehill returns healthy and productive. We'll see if they pick a QB later as a backup plan. I can't blame them for taking Fitzpatrick, though, as he will push Miami's defense not just secondary to another level. With Julius Thomas no longer on the team, the Dolphins needed to find a tight end. Gasicki is a phenomenal athlete, like Thomas, but scouts were concerned about his long strides preventing him from winning against veteran defenders. He'll be tough to defend against on jump balls, no. Miami needed a linebacker, and Baker can move. They met their top defensive need with that pick. Miami got another tight end in the fourth round, landing a solid blocker slash receiver in Smythe. Balage was a steal in the fourth round, as well, for a team that needed a good, young player at the position behind Frank Gore. They decided not to address the QB position, which may or may not be a good strategy given Ryan Tannehill's injury history. Offensive and defensive tackle should be high on the priority list when signing undrafted free agents.
New England Patriots draft picks, Georgia OT Isaiah Wing, number 23 overall, Georgia RB Sony Michel, number 31 overall, Florida CB Duke Dawson, number 56 overall, Purdue LBJ Awan Bentley, number 143 overall, Arizona State LB Christian Sam, number 178 overall, Miami WR Braxton Berrios, number 210 overall, LSU QB Danny Etling, number 219 overall, Western Carolina DB Kian Crossan, number 243 overall, Florida State T.E. Ryan Izzo, number 250 overall. Day 1 grade, a day 2 grade, a day 3 grade, a overall grade, of the skinny, there's not many sub 6 foot 3 tackles in the NFL. But Wynn's length and athleticism allowed him to excel at the position with the Bulldogs, and there's no reason to think he can't be a solid player there in the NFL. He also plays with a nasty streak. Just another four-year, high-character player for Bill Belichick. His college teammate, running back Michel, will join him in Foxborough. Michel has the versatility to be a star in the Patriots system, working as a receiver and slashing through defenses as a runner. On day two, the Patriots made only one pick, but moved down a couple of times to get fourth-round picks and Chicago's 2019 second-round pick. They also swapped third and fifth-round picks for 49ers right tackle Trenton Brown, they did select Dawson, a slot corner and troublemaker for receivers, trading away a fourth-round pick to Tampa Bay to select him. He'll contribute right away. New England traded out of the fourth round to pick up a 2019 third-round pick. Bentley and Sam were picks the Patriots needed to make to aid the second level of their defense. Berrios was the perfect New England pick on day three. He's a quick slot receiver who will fight for passes from Tom Brady. Picking Itling in the seventh round based on his physical traits made sense, though his college resume was not spectacular. New York Jets draft picks, USC QB Sam Darnold, number 3 overall, Fort Hayes State DT Nathan Shepard, number 72 overall, Miami TE Christopher Herndon, number 107 overall, Tulane CB Perry Nickerson, number 179 overall, Connecticut DT Fowler Renzo Fatukasi, number 180 overall, Virginia State RB Trenton Cannon, number 204 overall. Day 1 grade, a day 2 grade, B day 3 grade, B overall grade, B and the skinny, the Jets gave up 3 second round picks to move up 3 spots to find a quarterback. They might have gotten the top quarterback on their board with Darnold sitting there, though they wouldn't admit it if he wasn't their top QB. They paid a pretty high price to get him, but it's not franchise killing if he doesn't work out. It was a good move that could become a great move. The Darnold trade limited their selections on day two. Shepard will take over the nose tackle spot for the Jets, using his power and leverage to keep the line of scrimmage right where it is. The Jets found value to add to their tight end group with the tough and athletic Herndon. Trading a sixth round pick to the Colts for Henry Anderson, who didn't fit the Colts shift to a 4-3 defense, was a great move for the Jets, as was picking potential future starters in Nickerson and Fatu Kassi. The team failed to find a pass rusher or help at offensive tackle, though, which puts pressure on the team to find the top undrafted free agents at those positions. AFC North Baltimore Ravens draft picks, South Carolina T. Hayden Hurst, number 25 overall, Louisville QB Lamar Jackson, number 32 overall, Oklahoma OT Orlando Brown, number 83 overall, Oklahoma T. Mark Andrews, number 86 overall, Alabama CB Anthony Averett, number 118 overall, UCLA LB Kenny Young, number 122 overall, New Mexico State WR Jaleel Scott. Number 132 overall, UCLA WR Jordan Lastly, number 162 overall, Texas S. Deshaun Elliott, number 190 overall, Wagner OT Greg Senna, number 212 overall, Alabama C. Bradley Bozeman, number 215 overall, Ferris State Dezak Sealer, number 238 overall. Day 1 grade, a day 2 grade, the end day 3 grade, a overall grade, K. Hey. The skinny, the Ravens picked up a slew of picks and two trade downs and still got a talent at a need position, tight end. That's a great way for Ozzie Newsom to start off his final draft as the Ravens GM. Hurst is a smooth, sure-handed receiver who will provide toughness inside and stretch the field. 
I think fellow tight end Dallas Goder has a potentially great future, though, so I would have gone that direction instead. Giving up a second round pick in 2019 to get Jackson is not an overly risky play. I'm a believer in Jackson's playmaking ability and he's under no pressure to play in 2018. Jackson is a worthy selection. Brown was a strong legacy pick for the Ravens. The son of the late former Ravens OT Orlando Brown will likely outperform his much maligned workout numbers at left or right tackle, especially if he shows teams those poor results were not because of a problem with his work ethic. Andrews joined Hurst as tight ends picked in this draft by the Ravens. Andrews will test the middle of defenses much like Hurst. Joe Flacco and Jackson will love throwing to these guys. Newsom grabbed Maverick, a feisty corner, in the fourth round. He also picked a coverage linebacker in Young and a big, agile receiver in Scott. Lastly his immaturity red flags, but a fair amount of talent as a downfield threat. Elliott was a value pick as a future starting free safety in the sixth round, and Newsom got one last member of the tight end Bozeman, who could start this year. Cincinnati Bengals draft picks, Ohio State C-slash-Hog Billy Price, number 21 overall, Wake Forest S. Jesse Bates, number 54 overall, Ohio State to Sam Hubbard, number 77 overall, Texas LB Malik Jefferson, number 78 overall, Miami RB Mark Walton, number 112 overall, Illinois State DB Devontae Harris, number 151 overall, Virginia DT Andrew Brown, number 158 overall, Western Michigan CB Darius Phillips, number 170 overall, Toledo QB Logan Woodside, number 249 overall, Mississippi Grad Taylor, number 252 overall, Florida. State WR Auden Tate, number 253 overall. Day 1 grade, B day 2 grade, a day 3 grade, a overall grade, B and the skinny, picking up Cordy Glenn from the Bills for a move down of 10 spots in the first round will help their offensive line, so that needs to be considered here. Selecting Price, a center slash guard, continues the Bengals' effort to get stronger up front, though I think there could have been more of a difference maker selected here. The Bengals could have waited and landed a very good interior offensive lineman in the second or third round. The Bengals picked up an extra third round pick by moving down a few spots in round two. Their back-to-back -back third rounders Hubbard and Jefferson beef up their front seven. The games of both guys weren't loved by scouts, but in the third round, these picks make sense. Jefferson could be a particularly good value if everything comes together as he matures. Walton is a well-rounded offensive weapon, presenting good value in the fourth round. I've been a fan of Harris since the fall. I suspect he'll be a very good reserve corner in time. Brown met a need to improve the depth on the defensive line, and could be a steal if he consistently applies his quickness and strength. Woodside, Taylor, and Tate were all excellent picks late in the draft, though I thought they might pick a tight end since Tyler Eifert has had injury issues. Cleveland Browns draft picks, Oklahoma QB Baker Mayfield, number 1 overall, Ohio State CB Denzel Ward, number 4 overall, Nevada Austin Corbett, number 33 overall, Georgia RB Nick Chubb, number 35 overall, Miami to Chad Thomas, number 67 overall, Florida WR Antonio Callaway, number 105 overall, Memphis LB Jenna Avery, number 150 overall, Texas A&M WR Damian Ratley, number 175 overall, Louisiana Lafayette CB Simeon Thomas, number 188 overall. Day 1 grade, B Day 2 grade, a day 3 grade, B and overall grade, B and the skinny, Brown's GM John Dorsey benefited from his predecessor's bounty. They picked up a first round pick in this draft by trading down and passing on Deshaun Watson last April. Now, they have Mayfield, a fiery leader with passing skills that they believe can take the team's mojo to the next level. They had to pick a QB at number 1, and they did. The only red flag here is that Mayfield needs to make plays from the pocket to succeed. If Sam Darnold or Josh Rosen excel and Mayfield doesn't, then their process was flawed. Picking Ward number 4 overall, ahead of Bradley Chubb, was a bit of a reach. If he ends up being a Terrence Newman clone, though, it could turn out to be a good pick. On day 2, the Browns used a pick they received in Brock Osweiler trade to solidify their offensive line with Corbett, who can play inside or outside. Will he replace Joe Thomas? Chubb was an excellent choice, as well, because he will pound the ball between the tackles and create space for himself. 
Thomas is an athletic, explosive defensive end who can make an impact as a rotational player right away. Keep in mind that the Browns also used a third-round pick to get a solid veteran starter in Tyrod Taylor, who will be a bridge to Mayfield. One of the Browns' fourth-round picks went to Miami for receiver Jarvis Landry. Then they traded up in round four to select another receiver in Callaway, who had many off-field issues but could be a steal down the road if he can stay out of trouble. Avery would have been a top 75 pick without any injury, so Dorsey stole a future starter in the fifth round. Getting a defensive tackle to replace Danny Shelton is the only pressing need left for after the draft. Pittsburgh Steelers draft picks, Virginia Tech Esther L. Edmonds, number 28 overall, Oklahoma State WR James Washington, number 60 overall, Oklahoma State QB Mason Rudolph, number 76 overall, Western Michigan OT Chiquimim Okarafor, number 92 overall, Penn State S. Marcus Allen, number 148 overall, and .C. State RB Jalen Samuels, number 165 overall, Alabama DT Joshua Frazier, number 246 overall. Day 1 grade, the end day 2 grade, the end day 3 grade, an overall grade, the end the skinny, the Steelers went safety, as expected, but picked Edmonds, the brother of fellow first round pick Tremaine, instead of Stanford's Justin Reed and others. This was a surprise pick to most, and probably around early but given his strength and NFL bloodlines, father, Farrell, played tight end in the league, but maybe it shouldn't have been. He'll be a welcomed addition to the team, either way. Trading Mart Avis Bryant to Oakland for a third round pick meant they needed to find another big play receiver. Washington isn't tall or an elite speedster, but his super long arms and ability to win the jump ball make him a solid find late in the second round. He was paired with his former teammate, Rudolph, in the third round. They could make for an interesting duo in a couple of years. Rudolph was a good third round value. Okarafor could become a starter, but needs to work harder and faster on the field or he'll be out of the league fast. Allen adds another tough-minded safety to the Steelers' defensive back trove, though I believe he could be used in a linebacker-type role to take advantage of his toughness and agility. Samuels fits the Steelers' usage of fullback slash H-backs quite well, and will add another wrinkle to their offense. Frazier is a perfect fit for a team in need of a hard-working nose tackle. AFC South Houston Texans draft picks, Stanford S. Justin Reed, number 68 overall, Mississippi State OT Martinez Rankin, number 80 overall, UCFT Jordan Aikens, number 98 overall, Texas Tech WR Keith Cooty, number 103 overall, Wake Forest LB Duke Egeo 4, number 177 overall, Mississippi State TE Jordan Thomas, number 211 overall, Stanford LB Peter Callum Dei, number 214 overall, San Jose State CB Jermaine Kelly, number 222 overall. Day 1 grade, a day 2 grade, a day 3 grade, an overall grade, of the skinny, if the Texans had the fourth pick in this draft instead of trading up to pick Deshaun Watson last April, would they be better off? It seems unlikely, so I'll stick with the A grade I gave them last year. But we'll know more when Watson is healthy again. When Houston finally made a pick early in the third round, they found a great value in Reed. He's a bit tight in the hips, but he's also a smart, downhill player who will start for many years. They also got great value in Rankin, a tackle from Mississippi State who could play multiple spots. The dude just doesn't get beat, and will be a solid starter. Picking Akins over other tight ends like Ian Thomas and Troy Fumagalli is a move that's worth questioning. The Texans needed to improve their slot receiver talent, and did with Cootie. They also needed depth in the front seven, so picking Angio 4 made sense, he could play with his hand down or standing up. Thomas is a massive college wide receiver who needs to move inside. Indianapolis Colts draft picks, Notre Dame Og Quentin Nelson, Number 6 overall, South Carolina State LB Darius Leonard, number 36 overall, Avernot Braden Smith, number 37 overall, Ruggers de Kamboko Toure, number 52 overall, Ohio State de Taekwon Lewis, number 64 overall, and Dot C. State RB Naheem Hines, number 104 overall, Northern Iowa WR Doris Fountain, number 159 overall, Mississippi RB Jordan Wilkins, number 169 overall, 
Clemson WRD on Kane, number 185 overall, Houston LB Matthew Adams, number 221 overall, Syracuse LB Zaire Franklin, number 235 overall. Day 1 grade, a day 2 grade, B day 3 grade, B and overall grade, A. The skinny, GM Chris Ballard hauled in three second round picks from the Jets to move down just three slots. They still got Quentin Nelson, one of the top three players in the draft. He'll be a difference maker up front for an organization that needs to protect its franchise player. Ballard converted three second round picks, two from their aforementioned pre-draft trade down, into good players. I thought there were better players on the board when they picked Leonard and Smith early in the second round, however. Lewis didn't have great production last year, but he had a great junior season. The Colts finally found receivers in rounds 5 to 6, Fountain and Kane. Both are tremendous athletes. Fountain has to prove he can battle at the top level, and Kane has to become more consistent as a pass catcher to reach his potential. The team could have used cornerback help earlier in this draft, no. Jacksonville Jaguars draft picks, Florida DT Taven Bryan, number 29 overall, LSUWRD.J. Chark, number 61 overall, Alabama S. Ronnie Harrison, number 93 overall, and Dotsy. State OT Will Richardson, number 129 overall, Nebraska QB Tander Lee, number 203 overall, Wisconsin LB Leon Jacobs, number 230 overall, Mississippi State P. Logan Cook, number 247 overall. Day 1 grade, a day 2 grade, a day 3 grade, B and overall grade, of the skinny, the Jaguars selected Brian, even though they already have a load of talent on defensive line. But Philadelphia did win a Super Bowl with a strong rotation, and Brian has some real potential that the Jags coaches could tap into. They have a need for an inside linebacker, but the players of value at the position in the first round were already gone. Jacksonville got a good vertical threat in Chark late in the second round, and they hope he's as good a value as Allen Robinson was a few years ago. If he can be physical as well as win downfield, Blake Bortles could have something special. Landing Harrison in the late third round was a no-brainer in terms of value. He will punish ball carriers with impunity. Richardson has the length and strength to be a starting right tackle, if he has cleaned up the off-field issues. Lee has accuracy and consistency issues, but the tools are there if Jags coaches can harness it as he develops behind Blake Portals. Tennessee Titans draft picks, Alabama LB Ration Evans, number 22 overall, Boston College edge rusher Harold Landry, number 41 overall, Arizona Estane Crookshank, number 152 overall, Washington State QB Luke Talk, number 199 overall. Day 1 grade, a day 2 grade, a day 3 grade, overall grade, of the skinny, the Titans really needed an inside linebacker after the departure of Avery Williamson, so trading up for Evans made sense. They had to move down two rounds, giving up a fourth rounder and picking up a sixth rounder, to get ahead of the Patriots to secure Evans, but that's reasonable for an instant starter who can do a lot on the field. I can't knock the Titans for sending the Raiders a third round pick to go get Landry. He will take over for Derek Morgan or Brian Orekpo sooner than later. They'll find depth at other positions on Saturday and after the draft. Cruikshank has the length and agility play as a press corner or safety, so he's a good value in the fifth round. With Blaine Gabbard as the current backup, finding Thok available in the sixth round was a major bonus AFC West Denver Broncos draft picks, and Dotsie. State edge rusher Bradley Chubb, number 5 overall, SMUWR Cortland Sutton, number 40 overall, Oregon RB Royce Freeman, Number 71 overall, Boston College DB Isaac Yadam. Number 99 overall, Iowa LB Josie Jewell. Number 106 overall, Penn State WR Deshaun Hamilton. Number 113 overall, Wisconsin T. Troy Funagali. Number 156 overall, Arizona State Hog Sam Jones. Number 183 overall, Washington LB Keys Honviria. Number 217 overall, Arkansas RB David Williams. Number 226 overall. Day 1 grade, a day 2 grade, a day 3 grade, a overall grade, of the skinny, Chug was the best value on the board for this team. Putting him and Von Miller on the same defense makes them dangerous again, 
like when Demarcus Ware and Miller were doing their thing. Case Keenum's two-year deal took QB out of the equation here, and Paxton Lynch still has an opportunity to grow into a starter. Sutton's going to be a playmaker at the next level because of his quick feet and size. The Broncos also needed a running back after letting C.J. Anderson go, and found one in Freeman, who looked more explosive later in the 2017 season. He might be getting back to his former self after struggling through injury, if he returns to form, the team got a steal. Trading a Talib meant the Broncos were in need of a corner with length. Yidam is a good fit. Jewel was a fine fourth-round pick at inside linebacker for the Broncos. He's solid and able to cover space due to his instincts. Adding Hamilton a day after picking Sutton should make Keenum very happy. Humagali and Jones should have been picked around or two earlier, both fell huge needs for the Broncos. Kansas City Chiefs draft picks, Mississippi LB Breland speaks, number 46 overall, Florida State DT Dark Nady, number 75 overall, Clemson LB Dorian O'Daniel, number 100 overall, Texas ANMS Armani Watts, number 124 overall, Central Arkansas CB Tremon Smith. Number 196 overall, Tennessee Ogkalo McKenzie, number 198 overall. Day 1 grade, a day 2 grade, B day 3 grade, B overall grade, B the skinny. The Chiefs had no first round selection this year because they traded up 17 spots in 2017 to bring in Patrick Mahomes. The young gunslinger played well enough last season that the team unloaded veteran Alex Smith this offseason. The Chiefs wanted a versatile defender in the second round, and they gave up a third-round pick to go get Speaks, who fits the bill. Speaks is potential, and he'll have to meet it to make the trade-up worthwhile. Nady will be a good nose tackle, but can he affect the passing game enough to justify the team's decision to give up a fourth-round pick to move up 11 spots to get him? With the final pick in the third round, the Chiefs added O'Daniel, who will play a safety-slash-linebacker hybrid role. The value was about right, and it will be an interesting fit. Kansas City received pick 124 for cornerback Marcus Peters in their trade with the Rams this offseason, and they used the pick to meet their need for a safety in Watts. Smith could make the team because of its need to replace Peters. Interestingly, they're moving McKenzie from the defensive line to guard to take advantage of his size and athleticism. Los Angeles Chargers draft picks, Florida State S. Derwin James, number 17 overall, USC LB Uchin and Mosu, number 48 overall, and Dot C. State DT Justin Jones, number 84 overall, West Virginia S slash LB Kaiser White, number 119 overall, UCLA C Scott Quisenberry, number 155 overall, Texas Tech WR Dylan Cantrell, number 191 overall, Northwestern RB Justin Jackson, number 251 overall. Day 1 grade, a day 2 grade, C day 3 grade, C overall grade. Be the skinny, the Chargers let the draft come to them in the first round, and they got a great player at a need position. Doesn't get much better than that for a mid-first round selection. James is fluid, tough, and fast. I don't understand why he was still available at 17. The team was looking to improve its linebacker situation, and it deemed Mosa the best option available in the middle of the second round. Will Texas Malik Jefferson or Georgia's Lorenzo Carter who were both still on the board prove to be better players? Time will tell. They found their nose tackle in the third round, picking Jones. This might have been a little early for him, but we'll see if he can put it all together to be more than a rotational player. Why does a physical player with ball skills? Even after signing Mike Pouncey, the Chargers picked Quisenberry, a sturdy pivot who will start in the future. They did not find any depth at guard or tackle, though, nor a quarterback to compete with Geno Smith and Cardale Jones for a backup spot. Oakland Raiders draft picks, UCLA OT Colton Miller, number 15 overall, Sam Houston State DTP.J. Hull, number 57 overall, North Carolina DANT OT Brandon Parker, number 65 overall, LSU De Arden Key, number 87 overall, Wisconsin CB Nick Nelson, number 110 overall, Michigan DT Maurice Hurst. Number 140 overall, Florida P. Johnny Townsend, number 173 overall, Washington LB Azine Victor, 
number 216 overall, Oklahoma State W.R. Marcel Atman, number 228 overall. Day 1 grade, C Day 2 grade, C Day 3 grade, an overall grade, C the skinny, with many top-notch defenders on the board, the Raiders took an athletic but inconsistent tackle in Miller. His tape did not put him in the mid-first round. The team did get a third and fifth round pick in the trade to with Arizona to move five picks down, from 10 to 15, so that's a plus. Hall was one of my favorite non-FBS players in this draft, but his ascension to the second round was astounding. I believe his quickness and tenacious nature will translate to the NFL. Parker has run a bit of a reach in the early third, especially for a team that already picked an offensive tackle in round one. The Raiders took a chance on Key, who struggled with issues and injuries during his college career. If he can straighten things out, maybe he'll use his length to become a potent pass rusher. The Raiders traded for a couple veteran receivers Mar Davis Bryant and Ryan Switzer over the course of the draft. Adman is another pass catcher who could make the team with his strong hands and physicality. Nelson adds much needed competition to the team's cornerback group. Oakland doctors signed off on Hurst, a first round talent who was diagnosed with a heart condition at the NFL scouting combine. He's going to be a star. Townsend was picked in an appropriate place in the draft, and will replace Marquette King. NFC East Dallas Cowboys draft picks, Boise State LB Leighton Van Der Esch, number 19 overall, Texas Og Connor Williams, number 50 overall, Colorado State WR Michael Gallup, number 81 overall, Kansas DeDorance Armstrong, number 116 overall, Stanford T. Dalton Schultz, number 137 overall, Western Kentucky QB Mike White, number 171 overall, Indiana LB Chris Covington, Number 193 overall, Noisy State WR Cedric Wilson. Number 208 overall, Alabama RB Bo Scarborough. Number 236 overall. Day 1 grade, a day 2 grade, a day 3 grade, an overall grade, of the skinny. Vander Esch is a talented off the ball linebacker who can move on the outside and slip tackles inside to find the ball. The Cowboys needed to bolster the position. But should they have found a pass catcher here instead given their dire need at the position and having their pick of the best? It's a good pick if his neck truly is not a problem. Williams will likely play guard for the Cowboys. He'll join a nasty group up front and has the talent to make pro bowls. They found a future starter at receiver with Gallup. His progress as a rookie will have a large effect on how the passing offense performs in 2018. Jason Witten's expected retirement forced the team to find a tight end and Schultz should be a move the change guy for years to come. White was picked up in the fifth round to be a strong backup to Doc Prescott, but he has started qualities. Covington is another coverage linebacker with great potential as a special teamer, as well. Scarborough struggled to become the man at Alabama, but he'll be a worthwhile seventh round pick if he can lower his pads and run hard consistently. The trade with the Raiders to acquire Jihad Ward at defensive tackle met the only need left on their board. New York Giants draft picks, Penn State RB Saquon Barkley, number 2 overall, UTEP Og Will Hernandez, number 34 overall, George LB Lorenzo Carter, number 66 overall, and dot C. State DTV dot J. Hill, number 69 overall, Richmond QB Kyle Lalada, number 108 overall, Miami DTR dot J. McIntosh, number 139 overall. Day 1 grade. A day 2 grade, a day 3 grade, an overall grade, of the skinny, Saquon Barkley was the number one prospect on many teams' boards. Pass rusher Bradley Chubb, taken by Denver three spots later, could prove to be a better investment with this pick because of the attrition at running back, but there's no blaming them for taking Barkley. Hernandez is a breed of a left guard who will lead the way for Barkley. They had signed a couple of veterans inside, but Hernandez was good value near the top of the second round. Carter can play off the ball in coverage and against the run. He'll need to show the Giants he is committed football. Hill will disrupt things for offenses from his defensive tackle position. He ended up being the return from the Jason Pierre Paul trade. The acquisition of linebacker Alec Ogletree took two picks from their day three collection, fourth and sixth rounder, but that seems to be a worthwhile move for a team needing improvement at that position. 
The selection of Walida in the fourth round could prove to be a valuable pick in the next few years if the team is ready to move on from Eli Manning. McIntosh builds depth on the defensive line, but the team will need to find additional talent at wide receiver and cornerback after the draft to bolster those positions. Philadelphia Eagles draft picks, South Dakota State T.E. Dallas Goddard, number 49 overall, Pittsburgh C.B. Avant Maddox, number 125 overall, Florida State to Josh Sweat, number 130 overall, TCU O.T. Matt Pryor, number 206 overall, O.T. Jordan Malada. Number 233 overall. Day 1 grade, a day 2 grade, a day 3 grade, a overall grade, of the skinny, general manager Howie Roseman took advantage of other teams ignoring Lamar Jackson by trading out of the first round so Baltimore could select him. He grabbed the Ravens' 2019 second round pick and moved up in the second round on Friday night to select a tight end they could have taken in the first round, Dallas Godert. He'll be an outstanding player in the Jimmy Graham mold. The Eagles had given up their second round pick to the Browns to get Carson Wentz two years ago and traded away their third rounder to Buffalo, giving them just two picks in the first three rounds. The feisty and small Maddox can help replace Daryl Worley. Roseman reeled in Sweat, a first round talent, in the fourth round, only because of medical concerns. Maylid's potential is a 6 foot 8, 350 pound offensive tackle without football experience. He's a former rugby player, was worth a flyer in the seventh round. They could have used a little more linebacker depth, but they might find it on the undrafted free agent market. Washington Redskins draft picks, Alabama DT Duran Payne, number 13 overall, LSU RB Darius Cuse, number 59 overall, Louis Veloti Jaron Christian, number 74 overall, Penn State S. Troy Apke, number 109 overall, Virginia Tech DT Jim Settle, number 163 overall, Alabama LB Sean Dion Hamilton, number 197 overall, Virginia Tech CB Greg Stroman, number 241 overall, SMUWR Trey Quinn, number 256 overall. Day 1 grade, B Day 2 grade, A Day 3 grade, B and overall grade, B and the skinny, Payne wasn't overly productive in college, but his ability to stop the run was desperately needed for the league's worst run defense. If he continues to improve, he and former tight teammate Jonathan Allen could be a great one-two punch. The Redskins took a chance on running back Darius Gius, who was tough to tackle at the college level. They needed a true bell cow back in Washington, and now they have one who runs angry and will no doubt carry a large chip on his shoulder for dropping in the draft. Christian played both sides of the line in Bobby Petrino's offense at Louisville, and his athleticism made fans of scouts across the league. He'll have to up his game to handle the strength of pro defensive ends. Keep in mind that Washington included its third round pick as part of the deal to acquire quarterback Alex Smith this offseason. Apke provides special teams help and could become a starter in the back half in time. Settle bolsters that run defense with pain. Stroman's a lean corner, but competitive. Quinn is not irrelevant in any way, even though he was the draft's final pick, and could be a factor in 2018. NFC North Chicago Bears draft picks, Georgia LB Raquan Smith, number 8 overall, Iowa C. James Daniels, number 39 overall, Memphis WR Anthony Miller, number 51 overall, Western Kentucky LB Joe Ligbenoui, number 115 overall, Delaware Debylo Nichols, number 145 overall, Utah LB Kylie Fitz, number 181 overall, Georgia WR Javen Wings, number 224 overall. Day 1 grade, a day 2 grade, a day 3 grade, B and overall grade, of the skinny, the Bears found much needed speed and talent for their defense with the addition of Smith. He is not a physical specimen in the Brian Erlacher mold but still a force to be reckoned with. The Georgia star was the best player on the board at the 8th pick. Daniels will fit into the Bears offensive line wherever coaches can stick him. If his knees are fine, he'll start in the league for a long time. They paid a 2019 second round and 2018 fourth round pick to get an outstanding receiver in Miller. He'll take over Cam Meredith's spot and could be a long time starter due to his competitive nature. Ian Benoit will be an active linebacker for the Bears, who might have gone a bit early. 
Nichols is an athletic big man that will fit into their rotation right away, and Fitz fits well as an edge rusher in the 3-4 scheme, only injuries have limited his success in college. A riser is a senior, wins can win downfield for quarterback Mitchell Trudisky. Detroit Lions draft picks, Arkansas C slash Og Frank Ragnow, number 20 overall, Auburn RB Carrion Johnson, number 43 overall, Louisiana Lafayette DB Tracy Walker, number 82 overall, Alabama DT Deshaun Hand, number 114 overall, Oregon OT Tyrell Crosby, number 153 overall, San Diego State RB Nick Bodden, number 237 overall. Day 1 grade, a day 2 grade, C day 3 grade, B overall grade, B the skinny, Detroit got stronger in the middle by picking Rag now, who could play guard for now, or move to center if needed. Either way, he'll move the line of scrimmage. Matthew Stafford feels better already. The Lions were so interested in Johnson that they gave up a fourth round pick to move up eight spots. That's marginal value, though I'd expect Johnson will be a good back. Walker was picked two rounds earlier than expected, but he has the skills to become a starter in the league. Hand could end up a pretty good interior player, but he'll need to contribute right away to be worth giving up a 2019 third rounder. Great value in Crosby, who should be a starter at guard or tackle very soon because of his strength. He has quick enough feet to handle pass protection duties. Green Bay Packers draft picks, Louisville CB Jer Alexander, number 18 overall, Iowa CB Josh Jackson, number 45 overall, Vanderbilt LB Oren Burks, number 88 overall, Missouri WR Jamon Moore, number 133 overall, Washington State Og Cole Madison, number 138 overall, Alabama PJ.K. Scat, number 172 overall, South Florida WR Marquez Baldez Scantling, number 174 overall, Notre Dame WR Equanimous ST. Brown, number 207 overall, Cal DT James Looney, number 232 overall, Mississippi State LS Hunter Bradley, number 239 overall, Southeast Missouri LB Kendall Donerson, number 248 overall. Day 1 grade, a day 2 grade, a day 3 grade, B and overall grade, of the skinny, even with talented safety Derwin James on the board, the Saints gave the Packers a deal too rich to give up. Getting a 2019 first round pick was a steal. Alexander was the second best corner in the draft on most team boards, despite being a shade over 5 foot 10. They did give up a third round pick to move up but the net effect of the two trades is still a positive, and they met their biggest position need with a player who can be an above average starter. The team continued to bolster its secondary with Jackson in the second round. The question is, should they have picked two corners right away, ignoring other needs? With aging free agent veteran Truman Williams planned as a starter this year, it was probably a good move. Moving up for Burks cost them a fourth rounder, but he adds athleticism, strength, versatility, and intelligence. He'll be a good starter for them at a spot they desperately needed to upgrade. Green Bay went with more, Baldess Scantling, and St. Brown at receiver to rebuild that position. All of those guys could make a case for a roster Scott. Madison could be a long-time starter at guard. Scott meets a big need for a team that's lacked an above-average punter for some time. The Packers' troubles with the kicking game forced them to pick a long snapper, and Bradley's a good one, though he has an injury history. Depth and offensive tackle and tight end must be addressed after the draft. Minnesota Vikings draft picks, UCFCB Mike Hughes, number 30 overall, Pittsburgh goatee Brian O'Neill, number 62 overall, Ohio State to Jalen Holmes, number 102 overall, Central Michigan TD Tyler Conklin, number 157 overall, Auburn K Daniel Carlson, number 167 overall, Appalachian State Og Colby Gossett, number 213 overall, Tulane Day Aruna, number 218 overall, Cal LB Devunt Downs, number 225 overall. Day 1 grade, a day 2 grade, B and day 3 grade, an overall grade, of the skinny, Terrence Newman is no longer with the team, and Mackenzie Alexander needed competition in the slot, so the Vikings ignored the offensive line need to pick Hughes. He's a great athlete with some off-field concerns and only average size. He should excel inside for the Vikings. 
O'Neill needs to get stronger in the lower body to prevent losing leverage, but could end up a good investment in time. GM Rick Spielman moved out of the third round, but only down eight spots, and gained a sixth round pick in the process. Holmes will bring strength, quickness, and versatility to the Vikings' defense. Conklin's an underrated prospect who is fluid and sure-handed. Minnesota also needed competition at guard, and grabbing Gossett in the sixth round was absolutely a steal. Arunin is raw, but long and athletic, and has huge upside as a pass rusher. NFC South Atlanta Falcons draft picks, Alabama WR Calvin Ridley, number 26 overall, Colorado CD Isaiah Oliver, number 58 overall, South Florida DT Dedrin Senna, number 90 overall, Southern Mississippi RBI Tio Smith, number 126 overall, LSU WR Russell Gage, number 194 overall, Yale LB Foisaga O'Larkin, number 200 overall. Day 1 grade, the end day 2 grade, a day 3 grade, the overall grade, the end the skinny, even though the team had needs on defense that Javon Bryan and others could have met, it's tough to blame Thomas Dimitrov for taking a good value on Ridley. Ridley's quickness will complement Julio Jones and Mohamed Sanda quite well, especially with Andre Roberts and Taylor Gabriel no longer with the team. The Falcons got more good value in the second round, picking Oliver, who is long and can adjust to the ball down the sideline quite well. They addressed the nose tackle position in the third round, taking Sendit, who presents strength and quickness off the ball that could be a real issue for offensive lines, much like current Falcon Grady Jarrett. Smith was picked a bit higher than expected in the fourth round but is a good back with all-around skills, and has very good size. Gage will be a special teams ace for the Falcons. Carolina Panthers draft picks, Maryland WRD.J. Moore, number 24 overall, LSU CB Dante Jackson, number 55 overall, Tennessee DB Ration Golden, number 85 overall, Indiana T. E. Ian Thomas, number 101 overall, Mississippi LB Marky Haynes, number 136 overall, Maryland LB Jermaine Carter, number 161 overall, North Carolina LB Andre Smith, number 234 overall, Miami DT Kendrick Norton, number 242 overall. Day 1 grade, a day 2 grade, a day 3 grade, an overall grade, A. New Orleans Saints draft picks, Utsa edge rusher Marcus Davenport, number 14 overall, UCF WR Traquan Smith, number 91 overall, Florida State OT Rick Leonard, number 127 overall, Wisconsin S. Natrell Jamerson, number 164 overall, Boston College DB Cameron Moore, number 189 overall, Louisiana Tech RB Boston Scott, number 201 overall, LSUC Will Clap, number 245. Day 1 grade, C Day 2 grade, A Day 3 grade, C Overall grade, B The Skinny, The Saints jumped up the board to get their man. Davenport is a talented player but trading a 2019 first-round pick and a 2018 fifth-round pick to go get a raw pass rusher was a very heavy price. Alvin Camera was acquired last April for a second-round pick this year, and after one year that seems like a great move. The Saints found up the receiver with Smith, who presents a blend of toughness and speed. He should fit into the rotation this year and earn more playing time as his career progresses. Leonard is a former defensive lineman who is a project as a fourth-round pick, and probably was selected too early. Moore has the cover skills to complete for a roster spot this year. The Saints failed to hit multiple needs, however, including a developmental quarterback, defensive tackle, linebacker, and tight end. Tampa Bay Buccaneers draft picks, Washington DT Vita Vea, number 12 overall, USCRB Ronald Jones, number 38 overall, North Carolina DBM.J. Stewart, number 53 overall, Auburn CB Carlton Davis, number 63 overall, Humboldt State Og Alex Kappa, number 94 overall, Pittsburgh S Jordan Whitehead, number 117 overall, Pennsylvania WR Justin Watson, number 144 overall, Wisconsin LB Jack Sachi, number 202 overall. Day 1 grade, a day 2 grade, a day 3 grade, the end overall grade, of the skinny. Vea could be a difference maker against the run and is a penetrator in the interior. 
there was better value at a position of need in Florida State safety Derwin James. They could have picked a nose tackle later in the draft. But they did pick up two second round picks by trading back only five spots in the first round. That haul resulted in a starting running back in Jones, who can do a bit of everything and was a worthy selection. Pairing Stewart with outside corner Carlton Davis gives the Bucks depth. Kappa is a starting guard for the Buccaneers sooner than later. He'll get after it in a big way. Whitehead, fourth round, could turn out to be a starter at free safety if he can be physical with bigger receivers and overcome off-field concerns. Watson earned fans during the postseason process and has the chance to be a fit as a fourth receiver. Sitchi missed his final season at Wisconsin due to injury, but could rebound in 2018 to be a solid contributor in the middle. NFC West Arizona Cardinals draft picks, UCLA QB Josh Rosen, number 10 overall, Texas A&M WR Christian Kirk, number 47 overall, Michigan C. Mason Cole, number 97 overall, Fordham RB Chase Edmonds, number 134 overall, Penn State DB Christian Campbell, number 182 overall, Cincinnati OT Corey Cunningham, number 254 overall. Day 1 grade, a day 2 grade, a day 3 grade, a overall grade, of the skinny, Rosen is the best pure pocket passer in the draft. The Cardinals need to protect him, but if they do, he'll be a pro bowler. Giving up third and fifth round picks was more than reasonable for a player with his potential. Kirk is an excellent fit, not only because of his skills but the impending retirement of Larry Fitzgerald. Cole brings versatility to the Cardinals, as he started at center and tackle for Michigan. He was picked a little early for my taste, but he'll be a consistent contributor on Sundays. Edmonds was a worthy fourth round pick, sort of a smaller version of all-around offensive weapon David Johnson. Campbell is a versatile athlete able to play outside corner or free safety, two areas of need for the team. Los Angeles Rams draft picks, TCUOT Joseph Noteboon, number 89 overall, Michigan State C. Brian Allen, number 111 overall, Stephen Ath. Austin DeJohn Franklin Myers, number 135 overall, Virginia LB Micah Kaiser, number 147 overall, Oklahoma LB Ogbanayo Koronkwo, number 160 overall, Tennessee RB John Kelly, number 176 overall, Maynard John Neal Demby, number 192 overall, Rutgers DT Sebastian Joseph, number 195 overall, Louisville LB Trevin Young, number 205 overall, TCULB Trevin Howard, number 231, SMU to Justin Lawler, number 244 overall. Day 1 grade, a day 2 grade, B day 3 grade, a overall grade, of the skinny. Les Snead pulled the trigger on a trade with the Patriots to land receiver Brandon Cooks, giving up the team's first-round pick and swapping a sixth-rounder for a fourth-round selection. Jared Goff is already thriving under coach Sean McVay, and now he has a very reliable pass catcher in Cooks. This is a win-now move, which makes more sense than relying on a rookie receiver to help the offense. Snead gave up his second-round pick for Sammy Watkins, who played well for a year and then moved on. I'm sure that's not what the team had in mind when trading for him. Finally able to pick in the middle of the third round, the Rams get a swing tackle in Noteboon, who showed impressive movement last season. This was a good pick for a team needing depth at the position. The Rams did some work on day three well before the draft, grabbing picks and trading away Robert Quinn and Alec Ogletree and giving up picks for cornerbacks Marcus Peters and Akib Talib. Franklin Myers is an interesting edge rusher whom I valued as a top 150 pick. Kaiser could take Hogeltree's starting spot in 2018. The Rams went nuts on edge rushers later, but all had good value. Kelly is also a strong pick in the sixth round. San Francisco 49ers draft picks, Notre Dame OT Mike McGlinchey, number 9 overall, Washington WR Dante Pettis, number 44 overall, the YULB Fred Warner, number 70 overall, Southern Mississippi S. Tarvarius Moore, number 95 overall, and .C. State to Kent Avias Street, number 128 overall, Kansas State DBD.J. Reed, number 142 overall, Florida DB Marcel Harris, number 184 overall, Temple DT Julian Taylor, number 223 overall, Middle Tennessee WR Richie James, 
number 240 overall. Day 1 grade, C and day 2 grade, B day 3 grade, B and overall grade, B the skinny, McGlinchey brings power in the run game, and if he can learn to be a better pass protector, the 49ers will have a great find. He's a solid player, but linebacker Tremaine Edmonds and safeties Derwin James and Minka Fitzpatrick would have been better values. Armed with two second round picks, they moved up to get Pettis, a competitive receiver slash returner that was adequate value. Warner is a solid linebacker worthy of a third round pick, he'll shore things up at whatever spot the team requires at the second level, Will, Mike, or Sam. Moore, a late riser, is an athletic player with starter potential. The 49ers stuck with Street despite his knee injury, and he could prove to be a great value in a couple years. Reed joins Pettis in the return game, but meets the team's need for a slot corner. James should have been a fifth round pick, as his hands and elusiveness are top notch and his toughness belies his slight frame. Seattle Seahawks draft picks, San Diego State RB Rashad Penny, number 27 overall, USC Darashim Green, number 79 overall, Washington T.E. Will Disley, number 120 overall, UCFLB Shaquem Griffin, number 141 overall, Oklahoma State DB Trey Flowers, number 146 overall, Texas P. Michael Dixon, number 149 overall, Ohio State OT Jamarco Jones, number 168 overall, Temple to Jacob Martin, number 186 overall, Florida International QB Alex McGuff, number 220 overall. Day 1 grade, D day 2 grade, D day 3 grade, D overall grade, C. The skinny, there was zero surprise the Seahawks traded down, as they expected their guys to be available later. Penny is a good back but picked too early. This is the modus operandi for the Seahawks in recent years, picking someone in the first round much earlier than most people project. And, in most cases, the picks haven't worked out. Seattle lost its second round pick in a trade for Sheldon Richardson, which only turned out to be an unsuccessful one-year deal. Selecting Green in the third round was good value, and could be a steal like Michael Bennett was years ago. He should be a better pro player than he was in college. Disley is a blocker with some receiving skills. Getting Griffin not only reunited him with his twin brother, it added quickness and aggressiveness to the defense. Flowers is a very Seahawks-like pick big and strong like another fifth round pick, Cam Chancellor. GM John Schneider traded a seventh round pick away for the draft's top hunter in Dixon, who some thought could have been a day two pick. He's a good value and filled a need. Jones could start in a year or two given the offensive line issues. No corners or receivers selected puts Seattle in a hole at those spots after the draft.